the generic top level domains have been around for a few years now. So by generic top level domains, I'm talking about the alternatives to the traditional .com, .org, .net and .country domains. These are, oh, what, what can we call it? Uh, a cynical effort of ICANN to make more money and cause a massive detriment to security across the internet. So why is it such an issue? Well, generally it's to do with cost. Some of these domain owners charge a very minimal amount or even give the domains away for free. And who would take advantage of a free domain? Malicious actors? Yes. And they do quite considerably. This report has been around for a few months now, the Domain Tools Report, and they list some of the worst or most malicious domains. So now 2017 science study racing stream men review click GDN download and cricket all generic top level domains whereas back in 2015 we had uh, let's see they're not all generic top level domains though we have .cf us biz asia ru ga and .co are the traditional country domains and a bit further down, we have this graph of percentage of malicious domains to size of the domain. Now, I can appreciate this looks quite confusing, but the items are kind of interested in here are the concentration of malicious domains. The overall size of the pie chart there signifies the level of domains that are actually registered. So .com is the biggest. Yeah, that is the most recognized domain, well, I'm going to say, probably in the world, really. So most malicious, dot .science were around, oh, what's that, 60 to 70% of the domains are malicious. So to compare it like real life, this would be like walking through a bad neighbourhood where you have a 60% chance of being mugged. Would you do that? Or would you say, take an alternative route where you have a, I don't know, a 5% chance of being mugged? You probably want to walk through the safer neighbourhood. Why would you want to expose yourself to that risk of being mugged, beaten up, left in the gutter? You might be brave, just take a run for it, go for it, but, you know. But then you might say, I don't want to take that risk. But why would you take that risk with your computer? Why would you let your computer go and visit these rough neighbourhoods? So this is something I've been doing for some time now, is blocking certain top level domains. And I have that feature in NoTrack. This is a DNS server which can block mainly tracking websites, but also some advertisement websites. But one feature of it is you can do domain blocking. By default, this feature is on, and it only blocks the worst of the domains. Anything highlighted in red here is blocked by default. Anything highlighted in orange is something I would suggest you block. Anything unshaded is just, it's up to you really. There's Yes, there's malicious websites there, but there's also a lot of legitimate websites. And for the green websites, there's just a very little risk, so very little point in blocking them. So this week at work, I was doing a bit of research and actually seeing what domains are actually being accessed on some of these so-called malicious top-level domains. So I can't give you an exact figure of the number of users here, but uh, I would say this is in excess of 25,000. And for seven days worth of activity, let's see what the average user looks at. And this is an average of users which are not necessarily technically minded in terms of computing. I'm sure they have very good skills in the jobs they do. So starting with the dot .racing top level domain. Uh, yes, I'm sure someone actually typed that. Pro Summary V Racing. E finger cuz, right. And then... Looking down, you have these very random words. These are literally generated by randomizers. There is one consideration in terms of computer security that the more random a domain name looks, the more likely it is to be malicious. That's one I have highlighted here, which I, that is unpronounceable. I would say that is unpronounceable in any language in the world. Look at that. What are the odds of having a CDN and a three digit number on two completely different domains? I don't think anyone typed that. I don't think anyone typed those. Actually, you do your bid, I thought may have been a legitimate site. 
until looking on Google, there is absolutely no presence of it. But to looking at the number of visits they receive, so a few thousand a day, yeah, I'd say it's unusual for a site to receive a few thousand visits a day and not have a presence on Google. Hmm. Imptracker.bid, yeah, that sounds, well, like a tracker. More random domain names. Oh, this looks a good one. Microsoft.com, yes, yeah. Oh, no, wait, it's uh, the actual domain is claimyourdevicepromo.bid. Of course, they put Microsoft.com at the beginning because most people will traditionally read from left to right. Uh, computers, on the other hand, when they're looking up domain names, start from right to left, or more like middle to left. So it'll be .bid top level domain, claim your device promo as the site, and then this lot as a subdomain of that site there. Claim your device promo. Prepare update your safest searches. Oh, guaranteed to be safe, yeah. exe.bid. EXE.BID is actually a legitimate website uh, used for tracking. And as you can see, that receives quite a large number of visits, uh, particularly more during the week, where it, uh, it's about 300,000 there during a weekday and 200,000 on a weekend. Who's it owned by? Who is Proxy? Oh, I don't know. I don't know who owns it, but yeah. It is actually a legitimate website, but not necessarily one you want to visit. That could be legitimate. Unclassified. Sorry, I forgot to mention these are just the categorizations given by our web proxy. So let's see, we're quite a way down now. So that's all the way through the dot bid, and there's been nothing really of any use there. Now the dot men domain. How oh, very sexist, only having a dot men, not a dot women domain. Although there is a dot pink domain, so perhaps that counts maybe. Legitimate websites do not have this nonsense at the beginning, although it does sound a more legitimate sounding name. Range Blessedness actually could be a legitimate website, although when I looked at it, this is um, actually a malicious website where one system was constantly attempting to send data to it. Hmm. By winners. Happy Tiffy. Sounds, sounds legitimate. Lion Prizes. Oh, I wonder what's on there. Some fake nonsense about winning prizes where they're just going to take your details and say, oh yeah, we'll get back to you if you've won. <laughs> if you've won. Paradise Fortress. Well, oh, humor me. What is here? Oh yeah, that r really busy domain there, isn't it? Uh, received five queries in one day and nothing for a month. <laughs> so onwards to a different domain here, dot faith. Show your faith by going to Imperial Prizes. 383 users did apparently during the week. Um, or 383 visits occurred, I should say, during the week, not users. Ah, <laughs> that's a, an interesting graph there. So, so despite the fact the site existed since uh, well, coming at the end of May, it only started receiving visits very recently. I'm going to guess that uh, has no Google presence. No. <laughs> Funny old thing. So there wasn't actually many .faith websites, so onwards to .gdn. And all just utter nonsense on the naming. Well, there's quite a few of these actually. CEGB.gdn. Humor me, what is that? Don't know, no presence on Google. Sees a steady low number of visits. Epic Holdings Incorporated own the domain. Uh, secrethouse.party. Classified as business. <laughs> yeah, right. This was actually the domain in use. So it was joinhouse.party. And I think this one actually existed. It does! I found a generic top level domain that has a presence on Google. Great, it only took nearly a hundred sites I've looked through to find one. Yeah, great stat. Um, all of a sudden it started receiving a large number of visits over a couple of days. So then on to dot pink, add bet click in. Sounds good. Well, there's only a couple of dot pink domains there. So. Onwards to review. So all four upgrades you will ever need. Oh yes, I'll go there to get my system upgrades, shall I? Far better than going to, what is it, archive.ubuntu.com or if I was on Windows, Microsoft.com. Yes, yeah, so I'll go for 
all four upgrades you will ever need dot review <laughs> dot science well no nope. not cody dot science okay and then the next one was ml proxy it sounds a legitimate website to visit at work not cody and what a surprise there is no presence on google a bit sporadic on the number of visits so dot stream seems to be mainly used by people who were desperate to watch live tv <laughs> and it was this site genti.stream they were using so yeah 7000 views so obviously someone was very busy working and not watching stream websites oh we found another site that has a google presence that's two out of 126 on here well actually a couple of those might first row sports maybe that yeah, does so and lastly we have another dodgy update so all for updates you will ever need dot stream a very good looking website to get your updates from so that was a look at some of these dodgy top level domains the fact that in total of me looking through this i found one vaguely legitimate website all of this is just utter nonsense where it's malicious actors and scammers abusing the cheap domains and all it's showing me is that I've been right to block them all along. So, food for thought. You don't have to do it with no track, you can do it any other way you want. There's, uh, if you're using OpenDNS, you can block top level domains that way. Pihole could do a similar thing, and well, any other DNS server you can set up will be able to block top level domains. Although it is not something you'll be able to accomplish with the slash etc slash hosts file. Well, thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.